Hey, be the Ram Global Fellowship friends and family. This is Pastor Coach McKissick, and I'm back for your virtual Bible study. This week, we are continuing on the topic of getting to know God, getting to know Jesus. That's what October is about. We want to learn about the life of Jesus. But before we do that, we have to learn about his father, which is God. When we learn God's characteristics, we learn more about Jesus. And when we learn more about Jesus, we learn more about ourself. Last week, we talked about love and sacrifice. I'm going to do a quick review of last week because I want to make sure that you remember in case you were unfortunately not present in our virtual Bible study. Here's a quick, quick breakdown. We want to talk about we, John 3.16 was the scripture. It was for God so loved the world that he gave his only, for, only begotten son so that whoever believes in him would not be lost but would have eternal life. That showed us the depth of God's love. He loves us deep. He loves us so much that he will sacrifice his only begotten son. So it was the depth of his love, the sacrifice of his love, and the purpose of his love. How deep did he love us? He loved us so deep that he gave something. He made a sacrifice before we even made the decision whether or not to serve him. The sacrifice, he was able to give up the thing he cherished the most his only begotten son. And the purpose was so that we could have eternal life. Do you know God loves you so much that he gave his son so that we can have eternal life? I hope that you understand that because that brings us to this week's topic. I need you to understand God's grace and his forgiveness. Now you know how deep he loves us. You know about his sacrifices. But now you need to understand that he has grace that he is a forgiving God. Our scripture will be Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through 32. That is the story of the prodigal son. That is the story of the prodigal son. I'll try to put it on the screen. Don't know if it's going to fit, but I'll put it all up there. I'm probably going to, matter of fact, Lady McKissie told me don't paraphrase, so I will read the entire thing. But first, let's go to God in prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you. And I praise your name. I invite you down into this Bible study lesson. Let us exegete this text in a way that anyone can understand. God, we are here to glorify you and magnify you. We want to lift you up and give you all of the honor and the praise. Forgive us for our sins. For we may not even know that we're sinning. And sometimes we do. And we keep doing it anyway. So just forgive us. In your son Jesus, in my name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Remember, we're talking about his grace and, you know, his forgiveness. Ain't you glad for grace and forgiveness? I want to tell you a story, quick one. I'm an educator, PE teacher. My right shoulder's been hurting my right hip. Sometimes I'm just not feeling it. So I was at, you know, at, at my job in PE. And I said, you know what, today I'm going to work on my little internet stuff. I loaded up my cart. I, I went outside. I got the kids playing football. Everybody moving. We good, right? Why do I turn around and my advising, my administrator who does my walkthroughs or, you know, I guess you call it. It's, it's called walkthrough in the education field. They were checking up on me. So I turn around and I'll be doggone. If the coach, the lady sitting here right looking at me, what you doing, coach? You got me. I mean, I'm busted. Like, and then, of course, at that point, you have a kid that want to play around. Coach said, we can go play kickball. and say, nothing like that. And I'm like, bro, this is not the time to play or whatnot. Luckily, she says, you know what, Coach? I know you don't want this in your teeth because you're evaluating, like, platform. She said, I'll just come back. She came back the next day, uh, taking my pain pills. I'm out here getting it, catching football, throwing my little gimp arm. I'm doing it. But... You know, and the evaluation went in good. However, it was good to know that the person cared enough about me to know that that was not my best effort. That they just came on a day. I just wasn't feeling it. And sometimes you're not going to do your best. And you need to be glad that you serve a God who's not going to evaluate you on your worst day. They will tell you, you know, he, he still loves you when you do wrong. He still loves you when you come up short. Remember, he made the sacrifice of his son before you chose. 
So even if you didn't choose his son, he still gave him up. So that, that's just a quick example of grace and mercy. You know, she had mercy on me. She could have said, you know what, got him. And I have to remind myself that too when it comes down to choosing a team. And, you know, like I, I got to have a little grace. Now, there's a difference between letting the folks run over me and putting a bad team on the floor and having grace and mercy. Like it, there's got to be a line drawn somewhere. However, I'm going to go ahead and read the entire story, and that's coming from uh, Luke 15, 11 through 32. I'm going to read it. I'll put it on the screen for you so you can read it along. This is coming from the NLT. As to illustrate the point further, Jesus told a story, told them a story. A man had two sons. The younger son told his father, I want to share, I want my share of your estate now before you die. So his father agreed to divide his wealth between his sons. A few days later, this younger son packed all of his belongings and moved into a distant land. And there he wasted all of his money in wild living. About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land and he began to starve. He persuaded a local farmer to hire him and the man sent him into his fields to feed the pigs. The young man became so angry that even the pods he was feeding to the pigs, how hungry, he gained so hungry that even the pods that he was feeding the pigs looked good to him, but no one gave him anything. When he finally came to his senses, he said to himself, at home, even the hired servants have food enough to spare, and here I am dying of hunger. I will go home to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Please take me on as a hired servant. So he returned home to his father. And while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bring the finest robe in the house and put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. And kill the calf we have been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. So the party began. Meanwhile, the older son was in the fields working. When he returned home, he heard music and dancing in the house, and he asked one of the servants, What is going on? Your brother is back, he was told, and your father has killed the fatted calf. We are celebrating because of his safe return. The older brother was angry, and he wouldn't go in. His father came out and begged him, but he replied, All these years are slaves for you, and never once refused to do a single thing you told me to do. And in all that time, you never gave me even one goat for a feast with my friends. Yet when this son of yours come back after squandering your money on prostitutes, you celebrate by killing the fattened calf. His father said to him, look, dear son, you have always stayed by me and everything I have is yours. We have to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead and has come back to life. He was lost and now is found. That is the word of God for the people of God. With God's people, please say amen. Now with the hearers and the doers of his word, say amen, amen, and amen. This is an intimate story about a son who, who chose the wrong path. He wanted what was you know, entitled to him. He wanted the inheritance over his father's blessing like he, he would rather have what his father could give to him than what he could share with his father he didn't really value the relationship he wanted to get outside as we call it so he got outside and realized outside wasn't what he thought it was gonna be and he came to himself and said i might as well go on back home i can work for my daddy for, for for better than this but his daddy brought him back in and he had a party and he celebrated him there was an upset brother, but the dad explained to him, yeah, you're already good, but your brother was not, and now he is, so we need to celebrate. This shows us the love 
the grace and the mercy of God. First thing you need to understand is that many of us run away from God. It's not just this son. Yes, says the younger son packed all of his belongings and moved to a distant land. There he wasted all of his money and wild living. It sounds like, oh, that son shouldn't have done that. But how many times have you packed up what was, you know, how many times have you packed up what your parents put into you? You took the blessings. You took the discipline. You, you know, your parents brought you up in a manner that was like they set you up for success. And you said, you know what, I'm ready right now. And you went out and started doing something different than you were raised to do. You went away. It says he went to a distant land. And, and he was really seeking fulfillment. He was trying to seek pleasure in, in something that, you know, wasn't pleasurable. Yeah, it was good for the moment. But when his money ran out, he said, oh, man, you know, Atlanta ain't Atlanta. It ain't what I thought it was going to be. You know, sin is very enticing until sin starts sinning. So a lot of us run away from God. It ain't just them. Like It's not like we can't be so hard on this son. Because if you think about the way you were raised, some of you ran to God. But a lot of you all, you, you had that college experience. You had that away from home experience. You had the time where you left the presence of God, where you left his will, where you backslid and you were just outside living. You know what I am? Tired. My folk had me going to church seven days, eight days a week. I can't do it no more. But then you came to yourself. Point number two is we have a realization moment. We have that come to Jesus moment. It says when he finally came to his senses, finally came to his senses. My question is, when will you finally come to your senses? When will you realize the lifestyle that you are living ain't living? It's hard to come to your senses. It took his son to be, you know, like living with the pigs, sleeping with the pigs, eating with the pigs, till he realized, wait, I'm better than this. For me, it was going back. And like I said, I had to take that trip back to my college and realize, hey, I had to remind myself who I was. So I didn't have to accept certain things. Not that I was outside, but I had to remind myself who I was and where I come from. When you look back and remember where you came from, it can really help you with your realization moment. You won't be able to go back until you realize that you left. Some of you all have left the spirit. You have left the presence of God and don't realize it because you're like, I ain't doing nothing wrong. I don't, you know, like he had a come to Jesus moment. You have to really look at areas of your life where you need to turn back to God. It could be in your finances. Like, you know what? I am spending my money in all the wrong places. I, when you look around you, where is your money going? Are you tithing? Are you supporting others? Or are you spending everything on yourself? Like you want to like do this and then the money is gone. You don't know where it came. Like, like you, you have nothing to show for it. I'll say it like that. But you got to have that realization moment. And once you have that realization moment, you get to experience God's grace and his forgiveness. Like when that father said, you know what? Oh, my son is here. The thing is, his father was looking for him at the porch. That's a message to the parents and to the kids. Whether you're at whatever role you're in, the one who's at home waiting or the ones who, you know, has left and went outside. I like that the father was waiting. It says when he saw him, he was like, it's like, you know what? I know he's coming back because I know what I put in him. So that's encouragement to those parents that says, you know what? My child outside right now, but I know what I put in him. I know I put at least a mustard seed of faith in them. So I know they're coming back. So whenever they come back, I want to have my arms open. I want to have something fat and ready for them. I'm throwing a party because they're home. The worst thing you can do is when they get home, you want to remind them of everything they did. See, in this situation, it was him trying to say, well, you know, I done did all this and that. And they're like, wait, 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 you my boy, you mine. And that's what God is saying to you. I'm waiting for you to come home. I got so much for you. Because every time you come to me, you're trying to tell me what you did. I know what you did. I've been watching you. And I still got a ring for you. I still got a, a robe for you. I still got some food for you. 
And that's what God is trying to tell us. My grace is sufficient. I don't care what you did. You can come back home. So this message, this Bible study, is just to let you know, if you have found yourself outside, that God still wants you in his house. There is a party for you. You just got to be humble enough to go back home. First, you got to realize that you left home. You got off the porch and it wasn't what you thought it was going to be. You don't have to be shameful. Your pride should not keep you out of his presence because he already knows and he loves you anyway. You may say, I don't know him. Go ahead and get saved. If you not saved, DM me. Like, like this, say, like, Coach, Coach, I ain't saved. I want to get saved. I'll respond to you and I'll walk you through the steps because I want to make sure you know that you are just that important. You are important, okay? So I hope this message, like, I hope it hits who it's supposed to hit. God's verse said it will never come back voice. I know it's going to touch somebody. Let's pray. God, thank you for this Bible study lesson. I thank you for your grace, your mercy, and your favor. In your son Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I hope that you're enjoying this series, and I will see you next week. I'm out.